If you struggle to get yourself to take action, whether that be in your career or your business or your health with exercising or losing weight or your relationships or any other area of your life, and you feel like you're sometimes stuck in fear and struggling to move forward and you feel inept and like you're not good enough or smart enough and that there's something wrong with you, then what I'm going to share with you on this podcast is essential for you to understand. Because I'm not only going to discuss what it is that's going on, what's going on in the brain and the body, I'm also going to share with you step-by-step what you can do to finally move through the fear and get yourself to take action. Today on the podcast, we're talking about how to get ourselves to move forward and take action despite the fear. So this is super important if you want to move your life forward in any area of your life, whether you want to grow a business or move your career forward or improve your health, your relationships, or just be more confident in life and be more happy and fulfilled. It is super important to understand how you can actually move yourself forward despite the fear. Because the reality is, is that we all have fear when we want to move forward. We're afraid of what other people might think or say, or we're afraid of failure, or we're afraid of success. There's so many fears and stresses and anxiety about how to move ourselves forward. And so we're going to talk today about exactly what's going on in the brain and the body and why is it that we can sometimes feel like we desperately want to move forward, but we just feel so stuck, so trapped by fear, by anxiety, by overwhelm, by so many different things. We're going to talk about that and we're going to go step by step on how you can actually move your life forward. And yes, of course, we're going to do some tapping today. Super important, great tool technique that we can use to lower that fear, that anxiety, all that fun stuff. So, um, So I want to start off today by talking a little bit about what really holds us back. And and it's really important to start with understanding that you can't wait for the fear to disappear before you take action. Remember, the, the title today is How to Get Yourself to Take Action Despite the Fear. Because so often people feel like, well, I can't, I'm too scared. I'm not going to, I can't move forward. And they're waiting for the fear to disappear. And the reality is, is that most often the fear either doesn't disappear or doesn't disappear entirely until you start taking action. And so we're going to talk a little bit today. I'm going to start with a framework uh, that I'm going to share with you on how it is that we actually measure. It's called the action gauge. How, How it is we measure whether or not we're going to take action on something and what we can do to either move ourselves uh, to where we can actually are, are more willing to take action despite the discomfort, despite the fear, or what we can do to actually lower the fear. There's two things we can do, lower the fear or actually move ourselves in a direction where we're more willing to take action despite the fear. For example, somebody who is comfortable with you know skydiving or bungee jumping might have a much higher level of tolerance of fear in that particular area of their life, or they might just have a high level of fear and they're they're just willing to, or low level of fear with with that particular action. So we're going to talk about how we actually measure this. Really, really important. Um, I also want to share something with you uh, important to understand, and that is that courage is not the absence of fear. It is the strength and determination to take action despite the fear. Let me say that again. Courage is not the absence of fear. It is the strength and determination to take action despite the fear. Again, so often we feel like we can't move forward until we release the fear or the anxiety or the worry, whatever it may be, when really what we need to do is to raise our comfort level with discomfort. And the more you stretch that muscle, the more you practice pushing yourself forwards and and, and making yourself uncomfortable at times, the more comfortable you'll get with it. So we'll share a little bit about that today. I'm going to share a bunch of different notes today. Uh, If you want to be able to get a PDF download with all this, because, you know, for me, it's really important that you not only learn these strategies and techniques, but that you have something you can take with you and actually implement to get yourself to take action. So if you want to do that, just go to thetappingsolution.com forward slash take action altogether. One, one, not one word, two words, but put together, no spaces, no dashes. So again, that's thetappingsolution.com forward slash take action. So uh, let me start off here by talking about the action gaze. I'm, I'm going to um, share that with you. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll share a little uh, paper here that I actually wrote out that I drew out just before we started to record this. Um, If you're listening just to the podcast, just visualize this with you. I'll try to explain as best I can. And if you hear the crinkling of the paper on the audio, 
uh, just because I'm holding up the audio here. So if you can see that there on the screen, or or if you are just imagining it because you're listening to the podcast, I want you to imagine just a sheet of paper with a line right down the middle. Now, this is going to be the action gauge. Imagine it's a thermostat. And on that line, it's broken up and there are different numbers going all the way from zero to 10. So there's little markers going zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And on the right side of that line is fear. Now, if you've done tapping before, you're you're you already know how we measure whatever we're feeling, whether it be the fear, the anxiety, the sadness, the guilt, the overwhelm, whatever emotion we're feeling, we measure it on a scale of zero to 10. Now, with the action gauge, we measure what that fear level is on a zero to 10. So imagine that you're thinking about a particular action. Let's say it's speaking on stage, right? The number one fear in life is people speaking. They'd rather, they'd rather, as they, as they say, uh, number two is fear of death. They say people would rather be in the casket than giving the eulogy, right? Because that's the number one fear. So imagine that your fear of speaking out at some event or speaking in front of your colleague is at a level eight. And your action limit is a level two. Now your action limit, this is the left side of this diagram here. Your action limit is how comfortable you are with discomfort. Now it can be, it's a, it's a, has a variety of things that go into this. So this can also be measured by your determination. If this is something you're really determined and motivated and pushing forward to do, you know, you might be able to raise that to a higher number. If it's something that you don't care about that much and you're like, ah, you know, I'm willing to take action at a level two of fear. I'm not going to do it if I'm other than that. I don't want to be that uncomfortable with this particular action. Now, if you look at this and use this action gauge with anything that you want in your life, let's say, again, it might be speaking in front of others. It might be um, you know, getting yourself to exercise at the gym. It might be asking somebody out on a date, whatever it might be. And you ask yourself, what level from zero to 10 is, or how strong is that fear for you? And if that's at a level eight, for example, in this example, but your action limit is at a level two, you're not likely to take action on that particular thing. Now, there's two things we can do here, right? There's two things. Number one is we can either lower the fear, and of course, tapping is a great uh, technique and resource to do that. We can lower the fear, and we can raise our action limit. So we can raise our uh, particular motivation or or how determined we are or just our comfort level with discomfort on this particular action. Now, you can do either, right? So let's imagine that your fear was a level eight when it came to speaking in front of others, and you lowered it to a four. It went all the way from an eight to a four. So you cut your level of fear in half, but your action limit is still a two. You're still not going to be willing to take action on that particular thing. Now, if you move your action limit up to a five, whether that be because you really focus on how it's going to feel afterwards or you just realize that what how it can bring you forward and you just build up your determination or you just start to practice in front of other people and get a little bit more comfortable being uncomfortable and you raise your action limit to a level five, all of a sudden your action limit is at a five and your fear, let's say I, I gave an example was a four on this diagram, it's actually a three here for those of you watching on YouTube. And so there you have a gap. Either way, whether that fear is a four or a three, all of a sudden you have a gap where your action limit is a five and your fear is a three or a four, whatever it might be. And if there you have a gap, you are then willing to take action. So really what we're looking to do when it comes to getting ourselves to take action is to create that gap, to create the gap where the fear is lower than our action limit, our willingness to take action action despite the fear. Now, that might be getting your fear from an eight to a, you know, a four or a three, or it might be going, you know what, this particular thing I'm doing, I'm scared at a level eight of this, but I am so determined, I'm so motivated, I'm so willing to take this action that I'm going to take action at a level nine. That's your action limit, right? So it doesn't matter whether it's getting your fear way down or getting your action limit way up All that matters is that you create that gap where you are willing to push forward despite the fear. Hope that makes sense. This is really important to understand because a lot of times people feel like they all they have to do is get rid of the fear and then it'll go away. And the the truth is that nothing really gets rid of the fear in taking on big tasks until you get to a point where you are comfortable with it, you've done it more times, whatever the case may be, and you're used to doing it. So with whatever it is that you're thinking about, where you're where you're thinking, you know, I really want to grow my business, or maybe it's uh, I want to start doing videos for Instagram or TikTok, or it's in in your work that you want to be able to ask for a raise or speak up in a meeting, or 
with your health. You want to feel comfortable going to the gym and exercising around other people. Whatever area of life it is, if you can measure yourself on that action gauge where you measure the fear, the fear that you have of actually taking that action and your action limit of how willing are you to do this particular action despite the fear, you'll then get a measurement of where you stand and what you need to do to actually get yourself to take action. So hopefully that is helpful there. Um, for those of you on, on YouTube, you got the visualization. If not, hopefully that was clear in what I shared here just with the audio. But I want to have that as a framework to understand basically how we measure where we are in getting ourselves to take action. Of course, if you want to grow in bigger ways, the, the big thing you're going to have to do is to raise that action limit, right? And that's going to depend on a lot of different factors in life. If you... Um, just haven't pushed yourself in a long time. You know, I mean, I give, uh, you know, one example of this is is for those of you that are mothers out there and you've taken 10 years off of, from the work world because to take care of your kids and you haven't been working, all of a sudden your, you know, things that you did 10 years ago when you were working, 10 years later when you stop working, you're trying to re-enter the workforce, you're not going to feel as comfortable with, right? You're going to be nervous about it or scared about it because you haven't stretched that muscle. You haven't pushed that muscle to grow. And so when we're going to push ourselves in any area, we really want to focus on how we can grow that action limit so that regardless of what we're doing, no matter how strong the fear is, we're willing to get ourselves to take action and push ourselves forward because we are so determined and so focused on what we want to accomplish and how it will feel to actually accomplish those big things that we want to do. So again, hopefully that's helpful. And I want you to keep that in mind as we move forward and going through uh, what we're going to talk about today with um, how to lower our fear, how to raise our action limit, and how to get ourselves to take action despite the fear. So I'm going to break this down. I'm going to go through eight different points here. And then we're going to get into doing some tapping, of course. So I'm going to break this down in, into eight areas. But those eight areas really fall into three categories, which are preparation, action, and motivation. And particularly in that order. I know it can feel like it's a little bit out of order because preparation, of course, makes sense, but then action and then motivation. So the reason I have motivation as last is that motivation is actually something that we oftentimes have to focus on when we are struggling to take action. Oftentimes it can be easy to take some initial action, but then we get thrown off course or all of a sudden that fear comes up or all of a sudden we get bored of it, whatever the case may be. And so so often, I mean, an example of this is we can all get ourselves to go exercise one time, right? But how do you create that consistency? How do you create the consistency in the motivation? That's going to be really important. We're going to talk about some, some strategies that you can use today to actually be able to do that. And again, I'm going to mention to you, make sure to go to the tappingsolution.com forward slash take action, because I want you to have these tools and these resources, these principles that you can use at any time to remind yourself when you're struggling to get motivated and you're procrastinating and you're going, ah, I just, I want to get myself to take action and I can't. I want you to have those resources. So please go ahead and do that. Again, the tappingsolution.com forward slash take action. All just some free stuff that I put together. That's just going to be basically the notes on what we're talking about here on the podcast today. So uh, number one is preparation. So really important is you need to consistently focus on what you want. So often, so often people do not take action on their dreams and goals. An example of this is how at the beginning of the year, every year people set goals of what they want for the new year. And they and they think about them. Some people write them down, which of course I always recommend for those of you who have my tap and solution planner, I always recommend that you actually write down your goals. But then beyond that, they don't stay focused on them. They don't keep looking at them. It doesn't become their focal point of how they want to, what they want to move towards. And if you don't make it your focal point to actually be focused on what you want to move towards, it's going to get pushed aside. Life is going to interrupt. You're going to have you know, challenges with your business, your work, with your family, with your kids, with, your, with just life, right? Life gets in the way and you have to constantly redirect yourself to what you want. And for those of you who have my planner, you know I do this daily. This is why every day I look at my key objectives. I look at the things that I'm working towards because if not, I know how easy it is to get distracted. And so, so often people don't take action on things because they're just not keeping it front of mind. So really important that you consistently focus on what you want, that you review what you want, your goals on a daily basis, right? On a daily basis, you actually focus on what you want. So that's number one, consistently focus on what you want, write it down, figure it out, and then focus on it and keep looking at it every day. Number two, uh, break the tasks down into smaller chunks and then focus on getting one thing done at a time. 
right? So if we look at the action gauge, if I kind of bring this back up, if you think about it in your mind, if you are thinking about a particular task, right? Let's say that task is, uh, the example I gave before, is speaking on stage. And you've just made the decision to speak in front of other people somewhere, and your fear is at a level 10, right? I still remember uh, the first time I was going to speak on a big stage of about three to 5,000, I forget what the number was, and man, was I like petrified. I was like, oh my God, I've never spoken in front of more than a couple hundred people. I was going to speak in front of literally thousands of people. Now, initially that fear is because you are taking in all of it. You're imagining all of it, everything going on and what you have to do. And that can be overwhelming to do. But when we can actually break it down into smaller tasks to say, hey, you know what? I'm not going to worry about that right now. What I'm going to worry about is I've got three months to prepare and I'm going to start off with just going, you know what? I bet you I'd feel more comfortable if I just had it really well prepared as to what I was going to talk about, right? And so then you think about, you go to the action gauge and you go, if I think about the task of just preparing what I'm going to talk about, how afraid am I on a level zero to 10? And all of a sudden you go, well, that's not that bad. That's, that's, that's like the one. I'm not worried about preparing it. That's not a big deal. And so we're able to move ourselves forward in taking action by breaking down the steps and then focusing on getting one thing at a time, getting one thing done at a time. Because one of the biggest challenges we all struggle with is overwhelm with so many tasks going on, so much stuff going on in life in our super busy world and with all the distractions we have of social media and the news and all that stuff. And so it's really important that we then focus on getting that one thing done, right? One step at a time. We're not great multitaskers in general as people. We are much more effective when we can focus on a particular task. So again, number two here in that preparation is to break down the tasks into smaller chunks and then focus on one thing at a time to move yourself forward because that's going to allow you to lower the fear and raise the action limit on that particular task. And once you start to do that, you start to build momentum, right? So number three, tap to release the fear of what others will think or say. This one is really, really important. Um, it's my belief that the biggest thing that holds us back in life and actually pushing forward is the fear of what other people will think or say about being judged or or having people you know criticize us, whether that be criticizing us online or in person, whether it be a family member saying, "Who do you think you are? Well, you know, why are you doing that?" or a friend. It's all that criticism that you get because I think that's just ingrained in who we are as humans, right? We are, we, you know, you think about it thousands of years ago, we're a tribal species. We, we grew up in groups. Our safety was in numbers. And so anything that, that uh, can put us into a fear state of thinking that we're no longer going to be a part of the tribe feels like life or death. And the reality is, is that criticism is never life or death nowadays, right? You're never going to be rejected from society all, all together to the point where you can't, you know, uh, be a part of it and survive, right? It's no longer a life-threatening situation to have one person or multiple people re reject you. The truth is we live on such a massive scale with the online world nowadays that you can have thousands, if not millions of people love you and thousands, if not millions of people dislike you. So it's okay to be disliked by number by groups of people, but of course, that is not something that necessarily comes instinctively. And so we need to use tapping to release the fear of what others will think or say so that we can move forward. It's, under, it's really important here to understand how the amygdala works, right? So the amygdala is that almond-shaped part of the brain that when we are afraid of something, it triggers, it triggers that fight or flight response. And when that happens, when the amygdala is triggered, all of a sudden the front part of our, our brain, the prefrontal cortex, we're not able to access it as well. And that prefrontal cortex is where all our uh, you know, decision-making comes from. It's where we can look at the future and decide what the outcomes will be based on what we want to do. And so when we're thinking about taking action on something and we're thinking about, you know, oh, if I take action on this, again, go back to the example of speaking on stage, if I take, ac take action on this, I'll, I'll, I'll get more exposure. I'll be able to help people with my knowledge and experience. I'll be able to do all these great things. We can see that with our prefrontal cortex. But when that amygdala is firing, we're not able to access that. And not to mention that if that amygdala is firing at such a high level that you can't control it when you're speaking on stage, you're all of a sudden not going to remember it, right? And I think all of us have had that experience at one point in our life, especially in school growing up, where all of a sudden a teacher calls on you when you're not expecting it and you just freeze. And you, you the question that they ask was probably at any other moment, if, were, if the teacher had asked you one-on-one, you would have been able to answer it. 
But because you are in front of other people and you're scared and worried, your amygdala triggers and you're not able to access that prefrontal cortex and actually access the information that you know. And so it is super important that we actually use tapping to release the fear of what others will say or think. And we're going to do that in a little bit when we get to the tapping part. But again, I want to share these different strategies. And you'll you, if you go to that, that site, the tappingsolution.com slash take action, you'll have notes on all of these. So you don't have to necessarily have to take notes right now uh, if you don't want to, right? So uh, number four, choose your identity and who you are. This is really important. So often people feel like they just are who they are, right? Though I am who I am based on my past, based on my life experiences, based on my childhood. I'm just, I just am who I am, right? And when you allow yourself to not take, when you allow yourself to be your, your identity to be dictated by your past only, you're going to always be stuck in your past. You're going to always be stuck in who you were back then and what meaning you gave to life and who you believe you are now because of that, or what meaning or judgment other people have given you, what they said to you, who they said you were, or they said that you're not good enough or smart enough or or who do you think you are doing that? Whatever the case may be. But it's important to understand that you actually have choice over your identity. It doesn't mean you're going to become a totally different person altogether, but all of us have the ability to become better versions of ourselves, right? That's why we do personal growth. That's why we do tapping. That's why we do things to improve our lives is because we want to become better versions of ourselves, right? And so in that, it's important that we actually choose our identity and who we are. Because we will do anything and everything possible to be in line with our identity and who we believe ourselves to be. We'll say things like, well, I'm not the type of person who does that, right? So we need to choose, and we do that by saying, you know, I'm a person who, what, right? Whatever that may be. Again, going back to the example of speaking on stage, important to go and to choose, you know, and to go, I'm a person who speaks on stage. I'm a person who has the courage to share my wisdom. I'm a person who has the courage to help others and to teach them from my experience, right? But we have to consciously choose those things. We have to consciously choose who we are and how we show up in the world. You know, you can say, I'm a person who has confidence. I'm a person who is growing every day, even if you don't fully believe it. So sometimes I like to use the language of, if you don't feel confident, I'm a person who is growing in confidence every day. I'm a person who is getting stronger and stronger every day. I'm a person who is challenging myself to grow every day. But we have to choose that identity consciously so we can grow into that and become and step into that more every day. It's not going to happen overnight all the time. We can make big shifts, but we want to, day after day, grow into that better version of who we choose to be in the world. Again, on this on this same line of thinking, you want to think about what kind of people do you want to surround yourself with, right? If you think about your identity, what kind of people do you want to surround yourself with that that are, you know, they, I'm sure you've heard it before, that you are uh, the equivalent or you, you are... You will act in the way that the five people around you are, right? You, you will, if you've got five, if your five closest people around you are not pushing themselves to grow and, and they don't exercise and they're not kind people, then you're going to show up like that in the world. And so you want to surround yourself with good people. And, and to add to that, I also want you to think about when you think about what kind of people you want to surround yourself with, how will it feel when you feel confident and comfortable around those people? Right, because I know initially when I started to challenge myself to be around people that I wanted to be more like, that I didn't necessarily feel confident and comfortable around them. And so I want you to imagine if you imagine you're the best version of yourself, I want you to also imagine that best version of yourselves with yourself with the five people around you that you want to be surrounded with, and have it be that you feel confident and comfortable around them, that they feel excited to be around you too, that, that you've got things to offer to them, that you're not just happen to be there, but that you're somebody who they're excited to be around because you've got similarities in, in who you are and how you show up in the world and, how, and who you want to be. So again, imagine what kind of people you want to surround yourself with and imagine yourself being, being confident and comfortable around those people. That's again, a part of choosing your identity and who you are. Right, so that was step number four in that preparation process. Preparation process, again, to go over that quickly, number one, consistently focus on what you want. If you see me looking down here, for those of you watching on YouTube, just looking at my notes here, right? I just like to make sure I'm looking and, and not missing anything here. So number one, consistently focus on what you want. Number two, break the tasks down into smaller chunks and then focus on getting one thing done. Number three, tap to release the fear of what others will think or say, Right? understand the amygdala and how it works and to know that you just have to calm that fear down. Just like we talked about with the action gauge, you want to calm down that fear. You want to build up your courage. 
Number four, choose your identity in who you are. Again, you want to do all these things ahead of time in the preparation to take action on those big things that you want to push yourself forward towards. All right, so that's preparation. We're going to move over to action. Number five, we want to create consistency of action, regardless of how big or small the action is, right? Consistency of action is what creates confidence. It's what allows us to lower the fear, right? When we break things down into smaller chunks and we start to take action, all of a sudden the fear goes down. The fear goes down. For example, again, going back to speaking on stage. If you start to, if you have a big fear of speaking on stage, you start to speak in, in, you know, in front of smaller groups. You speak, you speak in front of a group of 10 people and then 20 people and then another one of 20 and then one of 50 and then one of 100. You start to consistently take action. And even though those things don't feel as big as it would speaking in front of thousands of people, it builds up your confidence and it creates a habit. You're creating a habit by consistently taking action. It's not important that you take big action. It's that you create consistency of action. Another example when it comes to this is exercise. I remember years ago, uh, probably 20 years ago when I was in college, I remember going through the P90X programs. And I remember the original programs were like 60 minutes long. I mean, I loved the programs, but it was a lot. It was a lot. And I remember we a lot of us guys at the time would go through the same thing. We're trying to lift and, and get into better shape. And we'd do one of those 60-minute workouts. And then we'd be so sore. And so our body would be so destroyed from it that we wouldn't exercise for like a week or so. But and it, 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 later on, people realized that they really needed to cut down the amount of time. And P90X actually has shorter programs and you know, 21-day fix programs and all sorts of different exercise programs that are shorter that are shorter, and what, what really matters is creating the consistency, right? So if you're trying to get yourself to exercise, better that you start with consistently exercising for five minutes a day than to push yourself for 60 minutes and be exhausted and overwhelmed. When you create that habit, it then becomes a part of your identity, and you start to do it more and more and more. So create that consistency of action regardless of how big or small the action actually is, right? So small wins are really important for the brain also because of dopamine, right? Because when we have a win, it triggers in our brain that dopamine and then we get a we get a fix, right? It's like a dopamine is a drug in the brain. And so we get that fix of going, oh, I did this and it felt good. Now I want to do it again, right? So we want to create that consistency. And really important that you don't focus on success or failure, but rather that you focus on consistency, right? I tell my kids this, I got three kids, nine, 11, and 13, as I'm recording this. And I always, I'm really big into growth mindset with them. I'm always telling them, don't focus on whether you succeed or you fail, just focus on consistency, focus on your efforts, focus on doing your best. And I've had my kids come home and tell me, you know, I remember my, my middle son once came home and said, you know, dad, you know, my, my friends are jealous because I tell them that you don't care what my grades are. You just care that I do my best because a lot of them have parents who are, you know, pushing hard on them about their grades. And I tell them like, look, I don't, I don't care what your grades are. I do care if you don't do well because you didn't put effort into it, right? But if you did your best, if you put the effort into it, if you put consistent effort into it and you succeeded or failed, it doesn't matter. It's about the process because that is a life skill that matters. A powerful life skill is learning how to consistently move forward in taking actions regardless of whether you succeed or fail. Because life is about the journey. It's about the process, not about the result. So again, that number five was to create consistency of action regardless of how big or small that action is. Really, really powerful in getting ourselves to actually move forward despite the fear, right? Number six, focus on enjoying the process. I actually talked about this a little bit. Focus on enjoying the process, not the result. Really, really powerful. Focus on the process. Be present with life. Stop worrying so much about, um, again, what other people are going to think or say and just be present with life. Enjoy the process. Enjoy the process. Nothing feels better than when you are present with life. I'm sure you've had experiences, you know, my favorite examples are always when you're you're having an evening with a good group of friends, you know, maybe sharing a bottle of wine um, and you just feel present with life. Right? It feels so good to be present with life and not be held back by the past, not be anxious about the future. So do what you can to be focused on enjoying the process and not the result. Right? Enjoy the growth. It's okay if you fail. That's okay. It's a part of life. So focus on enjoying that process. So number seven, we're going to move to motivation now. Really important that we get ourselves to be motivated on a consistent basis if we want to be able to take action. So number seven is be aware of what dopamine triggers you have in life. This is something that I've really realized in my own life is that when I am 
uh, m- consistently watching Netflix or Peacock or Paramount or one of those apps, when I'm consistently watching TV or uh, playing video games with, with my kids, which I don't play much in terms of video games with my kids, but, but they want me to play more often. Um, but I notice this with them. For example, Fortnite, uh, the game was super popular as an example of a game that has a, such a uh, powerful dopamine hit. I mean, if you've ever played the game or seen the game, you know the, the you start off the game landing and you have to get you know open trunks and and it's like opening a present and you find out what weapon you're going to get to play the game and it's an immediate dopamine hit. It's it's incredibly brilliantly done in terms of how the game is made, but when we get dopamine hits off of things that are not as good for us with consistently being on devices, with consistently being watching movies, you'll, you have a tougher time doing the things that require more stillness, whether it's reading, writing, uh, being focused on one task, because the body is so used to these dopamine hits that come from the TV shows from these shows that are nowadays so brilliantly crafted to keep you on edge, to keep you wanting the next episode and the next episode to be binging. And so important to think about if you struggle to be still, if you struggle to meditate, if you struggle to uh, focus, just be aware of what the dopamine triggers are that you have in life. Um, Instagram reels, TikTok videos right now, those are brilliant with how they're done because every time you watch one of these for five, 10 seconds, you have a little dopamine hit, right? You get a little laugh or enjoyment and you flick your, you flick onto the next one and you get another one. You flick onto the next one, you get another one. Brilliantly done with the brain to have that dopamine trigger. But when you can remove yourself from those to a certain degree, be on social media less, watch you know Netflix less, you will have an easier time being still and doing skills or taking action on things that you want to take action on, but that oftentimes you feel almost anxious or nervous doing those things because your body is looking for that dopamine hit. So again, when it comes to motivation, be aware of what your dopamine triggers are and be in control of those. Just you get to choose what those things are. And if you want to be more still, you want to be, you want to be able to control those things and have it be the thing that you control, right? So number eight, have a motivation strategy. I don't know many people who do this. Uh, it's something that I do that's really important is that you want to have a motivation strategy so that when you are struggling to get yourself motivated, that you don't just go, oh man, what do I do? What's wrong with me? What's going on here? But you actually have a strategy of things that you can try and implement. This is why I suggested print out those the PDFs that I shared at the tappingsolution.com forward slash take action, because I want you to have an action strategy. I want you to have all of these things, all the notes from this to be able to look at, to have a motivation strategy to get yourself to move forward when you're stuck and feeling like you just can't move yourself forward. So some examples of this, use tapping to eliminate stress and anxiety, right? So you want to eliminate that stress and anxiety to eliminate the fear, so that's not holding you back from moving forward. Eliminate worry about what others will think or say, right? You want to be able to notice what those things are that are holding you back. Be present with what you're feeling so that you can release those things and move forward. You also want to choose what fear you focus on, right? Fear is incredibly powerful. One thing that I think I I, I didn't realize for a long time, and, and I think it can be easy to be like, oh no, I just want to focus on what I want and the positive and all that kind of stuff. And it is great to focus on that. And fear is extremely motivating for us. We are more likely to do things to avoid pain than to gain pleasure, right? So choose your fear. If you are afraid of taking a particular action, what fear could you focus on that would drive you to take that action, right? So an example, going back to that speaking on stage, if you are afraid to speak on stage, you can also focus on the fears of not speaking on stage. Right. Well, what if I if I don't speak on stage on stage? I'm going to be so disappointed in myself. If I don't do this, I'm going to not push myself forward. I'm not going to grow. My business isn't going to grow. I'm going to feel like I'm not enough. I'm going to feel like a failure. Again, you can focus on some of these fears if they're motivating for you. Right. Really important to, to understand that that if you can use fear to drive you forward, it can be really powerful. But you do want to make sure that you're focusing on fears that drive you to move forward, not ones that are going to hold you back from taking action in the first place. But again, choose what fear you focus on. One of the powerful things you can think about is just forwarding yourself down the timeline of your life and thinking about what will it be like if you get to the end of your life and you haven't done these things that you want to do? What's that going to feel like? 
right? I know whenever I stop and think about that, I go, oh man, you know, I just don't want to get to the end of my life and not have shown up fully in life, not have done the things I wanted to do, not have not having been present with people, not being a present father to my kids, not being present with my wife. Like these, these things that motivate me, the fear of getting to the end of my life and not showing up in the way that I wanted to, in the moment motivates me to move forward and actually take action on things. So again, fear can hold us back or fear can move us forward. It depends on which fear you're focusing on. Um, another thing with motivation strategy is movement, right? Important. Sometimes we can feel stuck. Well, move your body, get yourself to exercise. So many amazing studies about the benefits of exercising at the beginning of the day, as opposed to later in the day, because of what it does to the brain and getting it going, getting it moving. Um, really great for kids to exercise in the morning before school. So use movement, right? Even if that's getting up, you know, if I, if I was going to sit down and record a podcast like this and I felt stuck and stagnant and didn't know what to do, I'd get up and move my body and jump around and maybe do some jumping jacks or some push ups, whatever it might be, to get my body movement, right? Act to create action. Movement creates action. So uh, another thing here, think about how it will feel to get the things done that you want to get done, right? We talked about using fear to move us forward. And we can also use pleasure in terms of what we want to move us forward and to, to move us forward and to take action. So some things we can focus on there is how will you feel about yourself, right? How will you feel about yourself? Going back to the example, speaking on stage, what's it going to feel like when I, when I get off the stage and I feel like I did a great job and I did it and I'm proud of myself and I got great reaction, right? So you can forward pace yourself and go, how is it going to feel? How am I going to feel about myself when I actually accomplish this action? Another thing you can do is how will people praise you or congratulate you, right? So often we're afraid of what people will think or say. So rather than guessing in our mind, because we're always assuming or guessing as to what people are going to think or say, we don't, generally it's not, generally people don't say much negative. It's what we think that they're thinking that's negative about us, right? So what can you do to think about how they will praise you or congratulate you or think positively of you, right? So if you took that action that people will think, oh, wow, you know, like they did this and good for them and they had such great information to share, or whatever the case may be, right? How will they praise you or congratulate you, right? So those are just some examples of a motivation strategy. You can write down lots of different things in a motivation strategy of things that will help you to get motivated. And sometimes one thing will work, sometimes another thing will work. But what you don't want to do is be stuck in procrastination and self-sabotage, in fear, and not moving yourself forward and not have a motivation strategy. So you want to have a motivation strategy. So hopefully all those things were helpful there. We're going to get to doing some tapping. Right, love doing tapping. Tapping is so powerful to actually get ourselves to remove the fear and to become more present with ourselves, so we can take the action we want to do. So, some things we're going to tap on today. Number one is going to be calming it down. Right, the first thing for those of you who follow what we do um, in our work, whether you have our Tapping Solution app or you're a member of our Tapping Insiders Club, you know that one of the first things that we always recommend is that you calm it down. Right, what we're doing when we calm it down. And, and is just lowering the fear, lowering the anxiety, lowering the overwhelm, and just creating some stillness with our emotions, with our energy system, so that we can get our amygdala calmed down and we can get our prefrontal cortex up and running or access our prefrontal cortex, right? So that we can make better decisions. I know if you've done tapping before, what so often happens is we just focus on calming it down first. And then all of a sudden, these new ideas pop in our brain or new ways of looking at something pop into our brain because all of a sudden, we are literally accessing our prefrontal cortex and we're able to think about things differently and see things from a different perspective. So we're going to do some tapping right now on calming it down right off the bat again. Again, this whole podcast is how do you get yourself to take action despite the fear? So we start off by doing some tapping and calming it down in our nervous system. So let's go ahead and take a deep breath in all together. Take a deep breath in and breathe out. And just move your body around a little bit. Notice what you're feeling in your body. Take another deep breath in and breathe out. And let's go ahead and start tapping on the karate chop point, the side of the hand. And just repeat after me. If you're new to tapping, don't worry about it. Uh, it's not like you have to do it right or tap on the points exactly or say things perfectly, right? It's a very forgiving technique. And again, 
If you don't yet, go download, don't have it yet, go download our Tapping Solution app. Really helpful for actually guiding you through the tapping and showing you exactly how to do it. So we're gonna start tapping on the karate chop point, but actually before we do that, let's go ahead and calibrate exactly how strong the intensity is of whatever we're feeling. So again, thinking about that action gauge, we wanna measure on that level of zero to 10, how strong the fear is or the anxiety or the overwhelm or the uh, stress, whatever emotion we're feeling around the action that we wanna take, we wanna measure that on a level of zero to 10. So we actually can see the progress, right? It's one of the great things about measuring with tapping is that you can actually see and feel the progression when you measure beforehand and then afterwards. So go ahead and think about an action that you want to take, uh, whether it be around your business, your career, relationship, health, whatever action it is that you want to take that you just haven't been taken. You just have not been pushing yourself forward in the direction you want. There's something that you want to do that you know you just keep not doing and you desperately want to take action on that thing, I want you to just notice that, feel that in your body, and then measure on a zero to 10 level. Don't second guess whatever comes up initially from zero to 10, where 10 is that it's really, really intense. So 10 would be really, really intense fear, and zero would be no fear at all. Zero to 10, just notice that for yourself. And then let's go ahead and start tapping on the karate chop point, the side of the hand. Remember, we're gonna start just by calming it all down, right? Just by calming it all down, and this doesn't have to be just about this particular fear. We can just calm down whatever's going on in life right now. So tapping on the side of the hand, just repeat after me. Even though I'm feeling all this stress and anxiety in my body, I acknowledge and accept what I'm feeling right now. Even though I'm feeling all this stress and anxiety and overwhelm in my body, because of all the stuff going on in my life right now. I acknowledge and accept what I'm feeling right now. And one more time on the side of the hand, even though I'm feeling all this fear in my body, I want to find a way to release it and calm my body down. move into the eyebrow point. Again, continue repeating after me. All this stress and anxiety in my body. Side of the eye, all this fear and overwhelm. Under the eye, I've got so much going on in my life. Under the nose, it feels like there's always so much running through my mind. chin point, and I just want to take a moment to be present and allow my body to relax. Moving to the collarbone point, all this stress and anxiety in my body. Under the arm, all this overwhelm with what's going on in life. Top of the head, I choose to just notice it in this moment. Eyebrow point, I choose to acknowledge that there's a lot going on. Side of the eye, all of these emotions going on in my body. Under the eye, I choose to just breathe and be present with all of it. under the nose and to know that I am safe right now. Chin point, it's safe to be present in this moment. Column point, I choose to breathe a little deeper in this moment. Under the arm and to just let it go with deep breaths. the head, I choose to calm it all down right now. I brought point with every breath that I take. Side of the eye, all is well. Under the eye, I am safe. Under the nose, I can be present in this moment. 
attention point. I don't need to solve all of my problems in this moment. Problem point, I don't need to take any action in this moment. Under the arm, this is a moment to be present and still. Top of the head to know that everything is okay. So just stop there and take a deep breath in. Breathe out. Notice what you're feeling in your body right now. That was just a simple little tapping process to say, hey, you know what? I'm just going to be still in this moment right now. There's so much going on in life all the time. And it's important for us to just stop and be present and go, hey, I've got a lot going on. I'm stressed about things. I'm overwhelmed about things. And that's okay. But in this moment, I choose to just breathe. I don't need to solve any problems. I don't need to take any action. I don't need to do anything other than to be still and to be present and to acknowledge that I'm safe and that everything is okay. Right? So important is just allowing our body and brain to relax and allowing that amygdala to relax, right? Allowing that fight or flight response to come down and to allow our brain to more to more fully come online. Right? So just notice, go ahead, whatever we measured at the beginning, if it was if you were focused on your fear or your stress or anxiety, just notice right now how strong that is from zero to 10. Hopefully that's gone down from you a little bit. Always great if you could let me know in the comments. Um, if you're on YouTube or if you're watching this on our blog, let me know in the comments how things are shifting for you. Um, just no, But if not, just notice for yourself, you know, did you move from an eight to a six or an eight to a seven or did you go from eight to a three because you just all of a sudden stopped and allowed yourself to breathe, right? That's always step one. We calm it down. We allow ourselves to be present. So let's think again about what that action is that we want to take. And I want you to think about how worrying about or thinking about what other people will think or say is holding you back. I said it earlier in the podcast, how often our fears of rejection, of judgment, of what other people will think or say, how often it holds us back from actually taking action and moving our lives forward. And the more you can push it, move yourself into a space where you do what you want to do because it's what you love and what you want to do in life without worrying about what other people are going to say or think or, or, or caring less about their opinions or judgments, the more you can move yourself into that space, the more you're going to do the things you want to do. The more you're going to take action regardless of failure, regardless of success, regardless of what other people say, you're going to become more focused on the process and feeling good in that process and knowing that you're doing what you want to do, that you're pushing yourself forward, that you're growing, that you're learning, that whatever you're doing, you know, if you're building a new skill, that you're not going to be the best at it, right? I always say that so often we hold ourselves back from taking an action because we are afraid of sucking at something, right? And we have to be willing to suck at something, to be really bad at something when we first start it because it's new. It's like, you know, when a baby first starts to learn to walk, they're not good at it. They can't run. They're brand new to it, right? If I gave you uh, a new sport to play or a new activity to do and you were brand new, you wouldn't know how to do it. So whatever action it is in life that you want to take, you're not going to be great at it at first. So just recognize that that's okay. That it's okay. So the more comfortable you can become in doing the things you want to do, regardless of what other people think or say, the more you're going to be able to push yourself forward in doing it. Sometimes, you know, just like with all the, the eight things that I listed, you can focus on things like taking consistent action or, or um, changing what you're focusing on and, or focusing on a fear that motivates you rather than one that doesn't motivate you and really having a motivation strategy to keep you on track moving forward. So we're going to do some tapping. So if you have, when you think about that action you want to take, I want you to think about and go, if you were to take this action, who is it that would judge you or, or think something badly about you or say something badly about you or that you just think is going to judge you in some way? That might be somebody you know, a family member, a friend, or it might be somebody online. You say, oh, if I put myself out there, I'm going to be judged. Or you might not even know. You might just go, oh, it's just not safe. If I do this, it's not safe. I don't even know why. I just feel it that it's not safe for me to take this action, Right? because somehow it's dangerous and somehow I'll be hurt by somebody else, right? Especially if you've had a lot of childhood trauma, there's a lot of uh, oftentimes unconscious fears that we have. But so I want you to notice that for yourself and just notice what it would be like to actually take action on the thing that you want to take action on, right? So remember with that action gauge, we're working to remove the fears that we have so that we can actually take action and move ourselves forward. We want to create that gap so that 
Our action limit, our comfort with discomfort is higher than the fear, or the stress, or the anxiety, whatever's holding us back from taking action. So let's go ahead and notice that again. That might bring up some of that stress or anxiety again. We were just lowering it. We're like, oh no, it's going in the other direction. That's okay. We want to bring it up and acknowledge it and tap on it so we can release it and move forward. So again, tapping on the side of the hand, repeating after me. Even though I'm worried about what others will think or say, if I take this action to move my life forward, I acknowledge and accept that I feel this way. Again, on the side of the hand, even though I'm worried about what others will think or say, If I try to move my life forward and take this action, I choose to stop and acknowledge that I'm safe right now. Even though I have all this fear about what others will think or say, and how I'll be judged, I want to find a way to release this and move forward. We're going to move to the eyebrow point. Remember, you can always do one side, the other side, both sides together, whatever you prefer. I tend to do one side simply because I'm filming this at the same time as recording it. That way you can see me better if you're watching on YouTube. So on the eyebrow point, all this fear in my body. Side of the eye, I'm so worried I'll be judged. under the eye, and it feels so unsafe. Under the nose, sometimes it feels silly that it feels so unsafe. Chin point, but I know it feels unsafe in every cell of my body right now. Problem point, I wish I could not care about what other people think or say. Under the arm, but I do in this moment right now. Top of the head, but I choose to remind myself that I'm safe. Eyebrow point in that even judgment and rejection from others won't kill me. Side of the eye, even though it can feel that way at times. Under the eye, I choose to breathe and be present in my body right now. Under the eye, and acknowledge that I am safe in this moment. point, I'm tired of worrying about what others will think or say. Cobble point, I'm holding myself back from taking the action I want to take. Under the arm, I'm tired of living my life on other people's terms. Top of the head, I've felt judgment and fear from others my whole life. I brought point from parents and peers at school. Side of the eye, but it's time to let some of that go. Under the eye, it's time to choose how I show up in the world. Under the nose, I want to take my power back. Chin point from all the people that made me feel like I'm not enough. Cobble point, because I am enough just as I am. Under the arm, I don't want to be trapped by other people's opinions. Top 
top of the head. I want to feel comfortable in my own skin. Eyebrow point. I wonder what it would be like to feel comfortable in my own skin. Side of the eye, not worrying about other people's judgments. Under the eye, I choose to take my power back in this moment. Under the nose, I am safe taking this action. Chin point, I choose to raise my action limit. Cobbling point, I want to take action despite what others say. Under the arm, this is my life and I'm going to live it on my terms. Top of the head, I will no longer allow judgment to hold me back. Eyebrow point, I choose to take action and move forward. We're going to continue in this process to move forward, to step into that identity of who we want to become. So I want you to think about that as we continue to tap. Side of the eye, who do I choose to be? Under the eye, who am I really? Under the nose, who could I be without the fear and the judgment point, I know I'm capable of so much more. Cabo and point, I know I have so much more to give in life. Under the arm, it would feel so good to accomplish these actions. top of the head, I, w- I would feel so proud to do these things. Eyebrow point. So I'm choosing to step up in bigger and bigger ways. Side of the eye. To lower the fear of failure in other people's judgment. Under the eye. To lower my own self-criticism and self-judgment. Under the nose, to raise my action limit and become more determined. Chin point, I've got this. I know I can do it. Cobbling point, so I choose to show up as my best self today. Under the arm, I know I can take this action. Top of the head, I commit to consistently focusing on what I want every day. Eyebrow point, I choose to break down the tasks into smaller chunks. Side of the eye, I choose to focus on getting one thing done at a time and moving my life forward. Under the eye, I choose to remember to tap on all the fears that I have when they come up. Under the nose, I choose to choose who I am every day. Chin point, and to remember that I am enough just as I am. Cobble point, I choose to create consistency of action on a daily basis. Under the arm, I choose to move my life forward with big or small steps. Tap the head to create consistency of action every day.
eyebrow point, I choose to focus on the process, not the result. Side of the eye and be more present with life every day. Under the eye, because life is meant to be enjoyed. Under the nose, I've got this, I can do this. Chin point, because I am enough just as I am. Cobble point, so I choose to lower my fear. Under the arm, to raise my action limit. Top of the head and step into the best version of me possible. Eyebrow point, I am enough just as I am. Side of the eye, I choose to move my life forward. Under the eye, I choose to take action on these tasks. Under the nose, I've got this. Chin point, nobody will hold me back. Problem point because I choose to step into who I am. Under the arm, and I am enough just as I am. Top of the head, one last time. I've got this. Stop there and take a deep breath in and breathe out. Just notice what you feel in your body. Notice, remember that you are enough just as you are, that you don't need to worry about everyone else's judgments, that that inner critic you have inside of you doesn't have to hold you back, that you can lower that fear on that action gauge and you can raise that action limit by having a motivation strategy, by stepping into who you are, by choosing who you are every day and choosing to consistently show up. I know that whatever you want to achieve in life is possible for you. So I hope you enjoyed this Tapping Solution podcast. I hope this helped you to be able to take action despite the fear, right? There are there's so many strategies that I shared there of things you can do to take action despite the fear, to lower the fear, to raise that action limit, to stay focused on the things that you want in life. I wish nothing but everything that you want in your life. I want you to achieve everything that you possibly could want, but it takes one day at a time. It takes creating that consistency. It takes stepping into the full version of you and recognizing that you are a force for good in this world and that you are capable of so much more than you could have ever imagined. So I hope you enjoyed this and remember until next time, keep tapping.